Hello, 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 hello. How you doing, Troy? How's everyone doing tonight? Welcome everyone to the 2023 Steelers Hall of Honor dinner. I will be your, your host, your MC. My real name is Bryant McFadden, but everybody calls me BMAC. So it's safe to say y'all can call me BMAC. Well, are you guys ready to celebrate greatness tonight? Are you really ready to celebrate greatness? So if you're really, really ready, can I get a, for the kids in the building, do not repeat me, but for the adults, can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. We ready to rock and roll then, let's do it. All right, we would like to start tonight by thanking our presenting partners. U.S. Steel, we would also like to thank our supporting partners, AccuSure, Giant Eagle, On Location, People's Natural Gas, Pepsi Shell, and Ticketmaster. Next, we would like to thank the Hall of Honor Committee. Members in attendance, please, when I call your name, stand up so we can show you some love. Art Rooney II. Joe Gordon. Tony Quattrini. Andrew Stuckey. Bob Lariola. We would also like to recognize the late, great Stan Saverin, who we lost this year for all the contributions he made to the Steelers Hall of Honor and the Pittsburgh sports world. Now, tonight's event proceeds benefit the Chuck Noll Foundation for Brain Injury Research. We would like to thank the Chuck Noll Foundation advisors and board members in attendance tonight once again, Art Rooney II, Tony Quattrini, and Joe John Seabart. So tonight is a special night as we are inducting four new members into the Steelers Hall of Honor. Now, hopefully you guys have gotten the opportunity to, opportunity to experience the Steeler Hall of Honor Museum. Now, if you haven't, listen, it's, it's, it's super nice. I think it's safe to say the only hall that might be better than the hall that we have is in Canton. And, and that's okay, if they're better than us, we can accept that, right, it's the NFL. But it's a, it's a nice experience and you guys will get an opportunity. So what a great way this, what a great way this team celebrates is history with iconic players from the past. We have a few of those honored members in attendance tonight. Please, when I call your name, stand so we can show you guys some love as well. Dana Harris, the wife of the great Franco Harris. Marianne No, wife of the great Chuck No. Cindy Russell, wife of the great Andy Russell. Karen White, wife, wife of the great Dwight White. Larry Brown. John Kolb. Louis Lips. <laughs> My former teammate, Troy Palomalu. Art Rooney, Jr.
and Mike Wagner. We also have some other Steeler legends in attendance tonight also. Guy who coached me, well not, you know, personally, but he was on the defensive staff, Coach Keith Butler. But the great Coach Dick LeBeau. All right. Athletic trainer, and unfortunately, while I was here, I knew we spent a lot of time together, and that's not a good thing. But athletic trainer, John Norwig. All right, I also have some great former teammates in the building as well. Hometown hero, Charlie Batch. <laughs> Willie Cologne. Willie didn't make it, but I said his name anyway. Yeah. All right. I, now, this guy might be tardy to the party, but I'm going to say his name anyway. Casey Hampton. Oh, he's here. Hamp. There you go, baby. I see you, Hamp. And if you guys haven't seen Hamp in a while, he's not a nose guard anymore. He's safe to say he's probably a strong safety. That's a good thing, though, Hamp. That's a good thing. All right. Hokey bro, Chris Hoke. Chris didn't make it. I know this guy's here. I'm still waiting for some meat also. You know, I mean, he has a cattle and he, you know, he has some lot of cows on his yard, on his, on his property. He was supposed to send me some, but I have yet to receive it. Brett Kiesel. <laughs> the great Bill Pri Priaco. David Revis. My quarterback, your quarterback, seven, Ben Roethlisberger. You know, quarterbacks get all the love, so we're used to it. It's not, you know, it, it comes with the territory, right? <laughs> Craig Woofley. Okay, I like to call this guy Mr. Postseason because in postseason play, he played phenomenal football. Lamar Willie. <laughs> I want to give a special thanks to Art and Greta Rooney for being here and helping support this special occasion. At this time, I would like to welcome Art Rooney the second to the stage to say a few words. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here to help us uh, celebrate the careers of four great Steelers. Uh, so, so great to see so many teammates back to help us uh, celebrate. Uh, I think that's a, a testament to what, what it means to go into the Hall of Honor that uh, so many teammates felt it important enough to be here to help celebrate with them. And, and uh, so thanks to all of you for being with us. Uh, we'll look forward to celebrating tomorrow as well. Hopefully not only at halftime, uh, and and uh, lots lots of uh, good memories to celebrate. Uh, also, want to thank uh, the members of the Chuck Knoll Foundation board who uh, doing such great work work for us, and of course uh, my fellow members of the selection committee. Uh, it's always a tough job, kind of figuring out how do we narrow that that list of names down to four people every year, but. Uh, you know, we have four great ones this year, and, and so we're just very excited that you're all here to, to join us and help celebrate. So congratulations to all four of the, the, the men, the Mansfield family. Uh, great to see all of you here tonight. Uh, have a great night. Thanks for being with us. So we're very excited to introduce the 2023 incoming Hall of Honor class. This is our seventh class entering the Hall of Honor. So let's take a look at these outstanding individuals. He's 
going to be hit and drop. It is James Harrison. He's back. Big rush. Loose football. Steelers have it. But James Harrison gets another sack and strip. And there's another from up. Aaron Smith knocked it free. Gonna be picked off, James Harrison has it. He's running up the sideline. Here comes Harrison jumping over people. The 10, the five, and that's a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw giving it to Harris, getting a key block for Mullen. He's in there for a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Jerry Mullen putting a perfect block on him. Now, let's turn our attention to our new Hall of Honor inductees. Our first inductee of the evening is former Steelers center Ray Mansfield. Ray was selected in the second round of the 1963 NFL Draft out of the University of Washington. The Ranger, as some called him, began his career on the defensive side of the ball, but it was his time at center that paved his way to the Steelers Hall of Honor. Ray was acquired via trade in 1964 and then played 13 outstanding seasons for the Steelers. A true believer in Chuck Noll's mantra of whatever it takes. Ray also kicked two extra points in the 1976 postseason run after Ray Jarella pulled a groin muscle. And we know that that's, not, that's painful, that doesn't feel good. He still holds the Steelers' record for the most consecutive games played with 182 straight regular season games. He was the starting center for the Super Bowl nine and 10 champions. Accepting this honor on his behalf, Ray's beautiful daughter, Caroline Mansfield Wright. A few nights ago, I had a dream about my dad. I was in Three River Stadium, and there were people parachuting in. You know, dreams are so weird. And there was a guy on stilts, and I saw my dad across the room. And I ran over to him, and I threw my arms around him, and I was said, Dad, are you speaking Saturday? And he said, no, honey, you are. And I thought, well, OK. That's the first thing I have to say to my dad after 27 years. It's kind of weird. Anyway, <laughs> but it was a wonderful dream, and it gave me a lot of uh, inspiration to talk about him. My sister Kathleen and I are so honored to be here and feel so fortunate to represent our father, Ray Mansfield. Also with us are many friends and family, and six of Ray's nine grandchildren, Stone, Maverick, Jaden, Tally, and Kyle Wolfley, and my son, Wyatt Mansfield. I'm going to start with a quote from President Theodore Roosevelt from The Man in the Arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the do doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who at his best, in the end, knows the triumph of achievement. And at his worst, if he fails, he fails daring greatly. Ray Mansfield, the old ranger, was born in 1941 to Owen and Carmel Mansfield. He was the fourth of nine children, and he came from humble beginnings and learned to work hard. He grew up in a big, loving family in Kennewick, Washington, 
And in high school, he was a student uh, athlete, and he lettered in five sports. He earned an academic scholarship to the University of Washington, where he studied history and played football, and was a member of the great 1960s Huskies Rose Bowl team. In 1963, he married our mother, Janet, and was drafted by the Eagles. A year later, he was traded to the Steelers for, as the legend goes, $100 cash. <laughs> Our parents found their home in Pittsburgh, settling and raising their family in this wonderful community, and where Ray lived the rest of his life. In his 55 years, Ray was defined, defined what it meant to live a full life. He was an adventurer and traveled the world, Europe, Hong Kong, India, China, and Egypt. He was a scholar and had a hunger for learning and teaching. He also taught at Peters Township High School in the off season before he established his insurance business, Husker Mansfield Associates. He was an inspirational speaker and a great storyteller, and boy, could he tell a story. He was known for his trivial pursuit prowess beating teams of two at a time. He was also a question to a Trivial Pursuit on a Trivial Pursuit card. He could find the right song for just about any situation. He was a humanitarian and raised money for charities such as Sudden Infant Death Syndrome and the Dapper Dan. He was an avid golfer and ran the NFL alumni charity in Pittsburgh for many years. He was a cigar aficionado, something he picked up from the legendary Art Rooney himself. He challenged himself physically all his life, whether it was backpacking in the Grand Canyon or climbing the Rocky Mountains, a passion he shared with his family as well as his best friend and teammate, Andy Russell. Whatever Ray took on, he strove to be the best. He was a son, a brother, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a friend, and he was my hero. Of all these amazing things, of course, one of his greatest achievements was playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ray worked hard and played hard. As the great Vince Lombardi said, winners never quit and quitters never win. Ray exemplified this statement. He never gave up putting every ounce of effort into every down he played. Win or lose, Ray was always in the game. He used to joke that in the years before the Steelers started winning, they couldn't pay people to take their autographs. However, those losing years made all those winning years so glorious, and he reveled at being a building block of the great Steeler dynasty. He loved his teammates, the Rooney family, the city of Pittsburgh, and the Steeler nation. Congratulations to my father, Ray Mansfield, his friend and teammate, Jerry Mullins, to Aaron Smith and James Harrison. Now your names will be forged in steel as some of the greatest to have ever played the game of football. Thank you so much on behalf of the entire Mansfield family. All right, our next inductee of the evening is Jerry the Moon Mullins. Moon. Jerry was selected in the fourth round of the 1971 NFL Draft out of the University of Southern California. Fight on, fight on, fight on. Known for his position flexibility, Jerry played guard tackle, and even tied in on short yardage downs before settling in at guard. In an era of power rushing attacks, Jerry helped pave the way for the great Franco Harris and the great Rocky Blyer to both rush for over 1,000 yards in the 1976 season. Please welcome four-time Super Bowl champion and newest member of the Steelers Hall of Honor, Jerry Moon Mullins.
Well, my journey as a Steeler began back in the same old Steeler days. My rookie year in 1971, we were six and eight. We gave away a couple games that we should have won. But I played with some great players. The draft class of 71, there were six <clears throat> players on that team that played in four Super Bowls, and there was another two that played in two Super Bowls. So we had eight Super Bowl starters out of our draft class. And I, I always heard that in the, the uh, 74 draft was the best of all time because there was five Hall of Famers, but I think we, we had a, a good group of guys that turned the franchise around. After my rookie year, we were in the playoffs every year of my nine-year career. Four Super Bowl wins, six AFC Championship games, and division titles in eight years in a row. So uh, I was blessed to be <clears throat> a part of one of the greatest teams of all time. And I had nothing but respect for my teammates. They all became lifetime friends. <clears throat> There's 10, 10 of my teammates in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, along with Art and Dan Rooney, Chuck Knoll, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, I, I've been blessed to have great relationships with all of my teammates. And uh, I'm so proud of the fact that we were able to turn the uh, franchise around. We were the nucleus of the beginning of the uh, Steeler Nation. Now the, the Steeler franchise is known worldwide. And I, I was always blessed to have great teammates and great coaches. And Ray Mansfield was my mentor my rookie year. He and Bruce Van Dyke took me under their wing, showed me how to play the game on and off the field. <laughs> and uh, he, really, he really got me straightened out. And uh, after Bruce was traded in 1973, I became Ray's roommate in training camp. The first night in training camp, Ray, I, I was out talking to some friends and came back to the room. We had 11 o'clock curfew. I saw the lamppost underneath my bed sheet, and I, I was going, what's going on, Ray? He goes, we're going over the hill. We, we, we were going to go out after a curfew. And I said, what happens if Chuck Knoll catches? We're going to get cut. He goes, I don't worry about it. So we got in the car and headed down to the local watering hole, and all the assistant coaches of the team were in there. And Ray walks up. He starts talking to the coaches. I'm like running to the bathroom to hide out, you know. And they, they, they obviously saw me, and they, they – you know, they, they just expected it, at, you know, of Ray. You know, that was the kind of guy he was. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> we, we became lifelong friends. Uh, he was a great teacher, a great partner. But the best thing he ever did for me, he set me up on a blind date with this gal. And 33 years ago, I went on the blind date. Five years later, I married my lovely wife, Joan. <coughs> So, Ray's, Ray's a very special part of, of our family. And a couple of people that are here, Dave and Vicki Revis. Dave was a teammate of mine, 74 and 75 Super Bowls before he was picked up in the expansion draft by Tampa Bay. And he played another eight years for Tampa. He's a great friend, lifetime friend. And also, Mike and Becky Wagner. Mike's a Hall of Honor member, and he's a lifelong friend. He came in. In 71 with me and he was the most popular kid in camp because he's the only rookie that had a car <laughs> and he and Terry Bradshaw and I were were roommates at this uh, high-rise building in Squirrel Hill we, we didn't want to sign a year-long lease so we were living in a building under construction and, and uh, we, we, we roughed it out we had a beanbag chair and a bed and, and a TV and that was it we were back from an era when we didn't make a lot of money, but we had a wonderful time. The Steelers franchise was small. It was a family business, and all of the people became lifelong friends. 
I saw Marianne Knoll. I saw Art Rooney Jr. here tonight. Those people are, are you know, wonderful. They're, Marianne's husband, Chuck, was probably the greatest coach that I ever had an opportunity to play with. And uh, it's really been a blessing to be a Steeler. Uh, I played for nine years. I was the first four-time Super Bowl player to be released from the team. I was traded to Cleveland, and I decided, you know, I, I didn't want to be a Cleveland Brown. I, I wanted to be... <laughs> I, 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 I didn't want to have to play against the Steelers twice a year, so I decided I'd rather be a Steeler for life, and I retired, and I never regretted it. And when I got the call from Art Rooney about being up here tonight, I couldn't believe it, but I had an opportunity to talk to a lot of my teammates and members of the uh, Hall of Honor. Uh, it, it's just a blessing to have people like that in your life. <clears throat> and my family and friends that are here, you know, you're the best. I love you all, and uh, I'm very happy to be part of the team. Thank you. Well, our third inductee is a former teammate of mine, the great Aaron Smith. Drafted in the fourth round of the 1999 NFL Draft out of Northern Colorado, he went on to play 13 outstanding seasons in the black and gold. Hall of Famer and arg not arguably the smartest football mind in the room, Dick LeBeau has said that Aaron is the best 3-4 defensive end of all time. Not my words, Dick LeBeau's words, and I agree wholeheartedly. Selected to the Pro Bowl in 2004, named to the Sports Illustrated 2000's All-Decade Team, he started 152 out of 160 games. Two-time Super Bowl champion, please welcome the great Aaron Smith. Just to start out a little bit, like when I got the call from Mr. Rooney, uh, I was kind of speechless. I really don't even know if I told the man thank you on the phone. Because to be honest with you, when you see that wall, some of the greatest football players that ever played this game, to be with guys like James Harrison and Troy Paul and others, I'm not sure I belong there. I'm, and I'm honored and I'm humbled and I'm appreciative. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't get here by myself. And that's really what this is about. I'm here. You. We're celebrating me, but really, I didn't make this by myself. I'm not a self-made man. And uh, I have a lot of family and friends here and teammates. And really, life's accomplishments is pointless if you don't have people you care about it to celebrate it with. And that's what it's about. Success, but celebrating with the loved ones and the people that mean something to you. And that's the people in this room. A lot of them are in this room today. Um, so I'm gonna to try to say thank you. I'm sure I'm gonna miss somebody and I apologize. First, I just wanna say thanks to my mom. She raised four boys on her own through some tough circumstances and they've all become very successful men. And um, thank you, mom. It wasn't always easy for her. And I'm sure I wasn't, I wasn't always the model child, but it wasn't always easy for her. Next, I, I wanna thank my, my high school basketball coach, which a lot of you guys think I'm here for football. Um, this is a man who took interest in me in my life in high school, changed the trajectory of my life, um, and invested in me as a person 
because he saw a value in me, not as a means to an end. Um, I took him to both Super Bowls, probably the closest thing to a father figure I have in my life to this day. And he actually, I'm going to be honest with you, he's the one that convinced me to play football. So I'm not sure how good a basketball I really was. <laughs> um, so then I, I really I, I want to talk about coach. When I got to hear John Mitchell, he unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. When I got to the Steelers, John Mitchell was demanding and brutal. But he saw something in me and I didn't see in myself. And he found a way to get that out and show me what it was to be a professional and a man of integrity and approach your job each and every day. And I, I love that man to this day. Um, I, I wish he could be here. Dick LeBeau, I can't say enough about you, sir. We're probably the greatest mind, football mind I've ever seen. But he showed me what it was like to be a man and lead with, with integrity and leadership and to treat people with, with genuine respect and still motivate them and inspire them for greatness. Um, next, uh, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I didn't bring my reading glasses. <laughs> Coach, I, I wanna say Coach Tomlin and Coach Cower, I was blessed to have two, fan, two of the greatest coaches ever in professional football to lead me and lead by example and treat me with nothing but respect. And they treated me better than I probably deserve most times. Um, the Rooney family, um, I'm just so appreciative to be part of probably the greatest sports organization in the world. As I've gone through my career, you look around and just the way they've done things and shown with, with the way they treat people and um, just the success and excellence they demand, but they do it in the right way. Next, my teammates. I mean, I can't say enough about you guys. Like, you guys are coworkers. But it ain't co-workers, you guys are best friend, friends for life. I, it's funny, I haven't seen some of y'all in years and I see you guys, it's like seeing my brother, uh, nothing, don't miss a beat. You guys made it fun to come to work every day, made it exciting, you made me wanna be better than I could be. And I'll be honest, as, whatever, I, as I get older, I get better, it's a joke. You know what I mean, I think we all do that. But I'm gonna be honest, I could do what I could do good because of my teammates, I had trust and faith in them and how good they were that I didn't have to do more than I needed. I just needed to do my job and they would take care of it for me. And so that allowed us as a group to be good um, throughout that. And I, I wouldn't, there's no way in my life, I'm not gonna cry, sorry. The lady in my dreams, um, she's inspired me at times when I didn't have inspiration She's challenged me when I, what I needed to be challenged, and she's lifted me up when I was having trouble. And she provided me five beautiful children, which is my greatest accomplishment. Nothing in this world will ever be greater than what, I put, what she has given me. I just want to say thank you, and thank you to everybody else. All right, the last inductee is another former teammate of mine. Um, you know when you earn a nickname, that's a big deal, right? But this individual earned two nicknames from us. We called him Debo. That's from the movie Friday. If you haven't checked it out, it's an outstanding classic movie. It's a few harsh words in there, but it's a great, great movie. Debo in the movie was a character who everyone was scared of, afraid of. Didn't really have any friends, and anytime he came around, people ran and they took the jury in, took the jury in, because he would take it. Because <laughs> he was strong, he was big, and no one wanted to be around him because he probably would beat him up. And then the last nickname this individual had, and probably still has right now because he still looked like he can intimidate a lot of people, was Silverback. Okay, you know, most silverback gorillas, they have their own cage. They're not with the other gorillas because you don't trust them because there's no telling what they might do when they get with the rest of the community. So we felt like those two nicknames were deserving and he lived up to that building based on what he did on the football field for all you guys to enjoy. James Harrison.
the all-American story when you talk about facing adversity. With all the success associated with James, it's hard to believe that he went undrafted out of Kent State University. Signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2002. From there, he was on and off NFL rosters, getting cut almost every other week, it felt like. But he finally caught on in 2004. That was the year he got his first sack with the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Cleveland Browns. Voted to the Pro Bowl five straight years, twice voted Steelers MVP, NFL Defensive Player of the Year in 2008. Oh, by the way, we also won the Super Bowl in 2008. And James Harrison, if you guys remember that ball game, created one of the best, not one of the best, let me not be disrespectful, the best defensive play in Super Bowl history. Without further ado, let's all welcome two-time Super Bowl champion and a man with a lot of nicknames, <laughs> James Harrison. didn't prepare anything, so I don't know how well this is going to go. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I have to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, first of all, because without him, nothing is possible. And uh, with him, nothing is impossible. Um, when I first got the call from Mr. Rooney's secretary that he wanted to talk to me, I didn't really know what to think. And it's going to sound crazy, but the first thing that went to my head was like, Oh my God, I hope you don't want me to come back and not retire. I'm like, I can't. I'm like, I can't do it. I just, I, I just ain't got it no more. And I don't know if I could turn him down, you know? But uh, when, I, when I talked to him, he had informed me that the committee uh, had voted to induct me into the Steelers Hall of Honor. And um, the first thing I said to him was, uh, thank you, but uh, I'm gonna have to turn it down. And it was like a good five to seven seconds of silence, right? And he's like, well, uh, why not, James? And I said, because I'm just you know. <laughs> so I needed to have something to talk about when I got up here, so, you know. Um, <laughs> to be, um, up here right now and uh, being inducted into this, uh, this group of men, the, the Steelers Hall of Honor. Um, you know, guys that actually, you know, just set the standard for what a Pittsburgh Steeler was to become known for or known as, um, you know, guys like, like Joe Green, uh, Mel Blunt, Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, guys that set the definition of what a Pittsburgh Steeler is, you know, uh, it, it's unbelievable. I just want to thank those guys for leading the way and, and, and uh, you know, setting that standard. Um, you know, it motivated uh, me and, and other guys to, to work as hard as you could and do whatever you could to hopefully just one day people would say, those guys would say that James Harrison was a Pittsburgh Steeler. And to stand up here right now on this podium and be put into that group of guys, I don't have the words to adequately express, you know, how that feel. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to thank Mr. Rooney and the voting committee for uh, giving me this honor. Um, I got to thank my teammates. I got to thank the fans. I got to thank my teammates big time because without them, I'm not here. You know, every guy on that team is not just my teammate, that's my brother. And my kids to this day call them uncle. You know, it's uncle in front of whatever it is. 
So um, I, I want to thank you guys. You know what, Ben? I want to give you a big thank you now that I think about it. Without you coming up there in my senior year and just sitting there like a lame duck, give me them five sacks, I don't even know if the Steelers would have picked me up, baby. I really, I really appreciate you, though. Hey, no question. Love you, boy. Love you. Love you. Um, speaking of that, I need to thank Peasy. I don't even know if he's in here. Joy, you in here? Peasy, you in here? Peasy ain't in here. But I got to thank Peasy for 2004 throwing hands so I could get my first start and they could get an opportunity to see what it is that I was capable of doing. So thank you, Joy, for, for, for that. Um, let's see. What, what else I got? I need to thank, uh, I got to thank my family. Um, listen, I got a lot of family here. I, I first, this is what happened. I started talking to them. They was like, well, I'm like, I'm going to need more than just, you know, like one table. They're like, well, how many tables you going to need? I'm like, well, how about 20? It was like, well, we can't do that. So we negotiated down to three. So it's three tables of my family here. That's all we could get here. Uh, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, you name it. And, and they're here. Um, I want to thank y'all for your support throughout the years. Um, uh, you know what? I got to thank somebody, two guys, it's two coaches, um, Keith Butler. Keith Butler was my linebackers coach. Keith developed me. If it wasn't for Keith taking the time to actually make me understand that I needed to learn the defense and sit down and be a true professional, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, he taught me the position as no other coach could because he played the position. He knew the ins and outs, the nuances of the defense. Coach Bush, thank you. And of course, I got to give thanks to the greatest man to ever be a D coordinator and touch the NFL field, and that's Dick LeBeau. Without Dick LeBeau, without Dick LeBeau, there is no James Harrison. And I tell people that all the time. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your world. And you know what? Thank you for being a coach that truly loves and cares for his players, not just as players, but as people. And that's why every last one of us in this room will run through a brick wall for you because of that. Thank you. Um, I got to give thanks to my mama. I got to give thanks to my dad, too, who is not here. I'm sure he's watching from above, though. Um, thank you for your love, your support throughout the years. Um, you know, and the ass whoopings, you know. <laughs> Even though I didn't think they were deserving. Looking back, yeah, I deserved it, yeah, 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 I did. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Beth, I want to thank you for giving me two individuals that probably saved my life and definitely made me a better person. And that's my son's James. Yeah. James, Henry, you boys made me a better person. You made me a more understanding person, you made me a more caring person. Definitely made me a more patient person. <laughs> but of all, all, of all else, you made me love unconditionally. I love you boys. And you will never understand how much I love you until you have kids of your own. Because I never understood how much my father loved me until I had you all. Ugh. Proverbs 13, 24. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. And that is why I'm tough on you boys. That is why I discipline you boys, because I love you. It's times that you may upset me, you may outright piss me off. <laughs> you may even disappoint me, but there's nothing in this world that will ever make me stop loving you. I love you boys forever and always. <laughs>